one of the challenges of just getting started in an introductory biology class is you're probably already by now you've already been slammed with this realization that there are millions upon millions of different organisms that make up all living things on earth you have very small organisms like bacteria protists yeast and things like that and then you have very large very complex organisms like plants some larger fungi uh, humans animals things like that and by now you're probably thinking okay we've got millions of different types of organisms what are the common threads that tie them together because if you just consider the organisms by themselves they don't really seem to have a whole lot in common so one of the major themes in biology is that despite all of this diversity living things are very organized so a helpful thing to uh, use in approaching biology is to consider what we call levels of biological organization that way despite all of this diversity you can assure yourself that there is organization in how everything is put together and all these different types of organisms are all put together in the same way so one thing to address is that we have all of these different levels of organization that are listed up on the board behind me but one thing to consider is that every time you move from a level of organization that is more simple than the last or excuse me more complex than the last you are adding on not only a layer of complexity but you are also taking on what are called emergent properties so an emergent property basically is the sum or the, excuse me the whole is more than the sum of its parts it's kind of like uh, the example of a car so if you take a car apart and you have all of the different individual pieces of the car lying around on the ground those pieces aren't really going to be able to get you to the store or to work etc you need all these pieces working together in order to get this emergent property of a car able to drive you from a to b so each level of organization up here on the board starting with the simplest which are atoms every time you move to a new level on the list that new level takes on emergent properties in which all of the pieces from the previous level are working together to give you some new function that you wouldn't have with those previous pieces working on their own so let's go ahead and address what each of these levels are so the best place to start is at the very bottom so when we say at the bottom we're talking about at the absolute simplest you can't get any simpler than the atom so atoms are basically the components that make up everything in the known universe this isn't just unique to biology this is living matter and non-living matter so you yourself a living thing you are made up of atoms the same way the desk that you're sitting at the chair that you're sitting on those are made up of atoms as well so some examples of atoms that you're most uh, often going to encounter in biology are things like hydrogen oxygen carbon those are three examples but those are far from the only three that we're going to see so when you get multiple atoms working together in one unit you get what is called a molecule so some examples of molecules some of which you're probably familiar with are water which you can see are, is made up of hydrogen and oxygen atoms glucose which is made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen atoms carbon dioxide which again is made up of carbon and oxygen atoms so these molecules here are made up of atoms they're made up of individual units from the previous group but because these atoms are working together in a group these molecules are able to accomplish things that just the individual atoms couldn't on their own so that's what we're talking about with an emergent property so moving along all uh, all different types of molecules are capable of working together coming into large assemblies to form what are called cells so the cell is incredibly special because this is the functional unit of biology so every living thing is made up of cells so some examples of different types of cells are going to be things like heart cells brain cells liver cells the point here is that cells are all made up of molecules but cells are incredibly special because cells can take on specialized functions 
So heart cells are set up and structured so that they are appropriate for what your heart does. Your brain cells are set up differently appropriate for what your brain does and the same for a liver cell. So what you'll see listed here last as a fourth example of a type of cell is a bacterium. This is an important point to make because heart cells, brain cells, liver cells, these are just very small individual components of what will eventually make a whole organism. Bacteria on their own are organisms themselves. So a bacterium is what we call a unicellular organism. It's an organism that is only made up of one single solitary cell. Something like a human, like us, we are multicellular organisms in the sense that our bodies, our entire beings, are made up of trillions and trillions of cells. So we call ourselves multicellular in the sense that we're obviously made up of more than just one cell. So everything past this point right here, past the point of just talking about cells, once you start to move up in complexity, we're talking about multicellular organisms. So the butt kind of stops here if you're just talking about a unicellular organism. Okay, so moving along, talking about multicellular organisms. When multiple cells start working together, you get what is called a tissue. So if multiple heart cells start working together, you get heart tissue. Brain cells form together to make brain tissue. Liver cells form together to make liver tissue. So you can kind of see a theme here. You have different types of cells that are all going to work together to achieve a common goal. So heart tissue is going to work together to keep the heart beating. Brain tissue is going to work together to process information coming into and out of your brain. Liver tissue is going to work together to make sure that your liver is functioning properly in digestion and detoxification, etc. So when multiple layers of tissue start working together, we end up with a whole organ. So since we're keeping up with the theme of heart, brain, and liver here, you have heart cell, heart tissue, and then finally a whole heart. Same deal with the brain, same deal with the liver. So cells, tissues, and whole organs. So even though if you ever take human physiology, you're mostly going to become familiar with the functioning of whole organs, but of course you don't want to forget that organs are made up of individual cells that are all working together to make sure that that organ functions the way you want it to. You can't forget that an organism and all the organs that make us up, these are all made up of cells. So when multiple organs start working together, that forms an organ system. So for the heart, you've got the cardiovascular system. So it, there, in addition to the heart, you're also talking about blood vessels and things like that. Uh, for the brain, you have the nervous system. So in that case, you're not just talking about the brain, which is one organ. You're also talking about all the nerves. You're talking about the spinal cord, things like that. And then the liver, which is just one organ, it's part of the digestive system. So it's working together with the stomach, the pancreas, the intestines, the colon, all the other organs that make up the digestive system. So again, you have all these different components working together to give you a new emergent property. So the digestive system has qualities about it that wouldn't be possible with just each individual organ alone. And then finally, when you get all of these different organ systems working together, you end up with an entire organism. So here we're obviously talking about multicellular organisms like humans, dogs, cats, spiders, basically anything you want. You could even start to add things like plants and fungi into the mix, although the organ systems are going to obviously look a lot different. Everything listed here in terms of examples is obviously specific to mammals like humans, dogs, and cats. So you're going to want to, as you jump into general biology, you're going to want to make sure that you understand the progression of these levels of organization. You want to get to a point where everything that we've talked about here is second nature to you, so you really don't even have to think twice about the fact that organs are made up of tissue, molecules make up cells, molecules are made up of atoms, etc. 
You want to get to a point where this becomes second nature to you so that when you start to think about these things on a higher level, you're not having to waste mental energy trying to keep this stuff straight. You'll be able to think about things a lot more critically and get a lot more involved in the biology itself.